Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 28th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A couple weeks ago, with Chrome OS 56, Google implemented TLS 1.3 for the first time. TLS 1.3 being the latest and greatest version of TLS. And of course, something a lot of browsers and operating systems are going to move to. But uh, sadly, with uh, Google being the first one out of the gate with TLS 1.3, they're also getting to debug some of the issues in in the operability with TLS 1.3. It appears that Symantec's Blue Code product does implement TLS 1.3 but doesn't do so correctly, which does result in TLS connections failing. Now, typically, just like in prior versions of TLS, if a TLS version isn't supported, there's supposed to be a downgrade. So Chrome OS was supposed to switch down to TLS 1.2 or TLS 1.1. But in this case, due to this bug in blue code, this downgrade isn't happening. And the end result is that essentially Chrome OS as of a couple of weeks ago, is not able to establish any network connection if your network is behind a blue code proxy. Blue code is the only product named so far as being not compatible, uh, but the bug note is talking about other unspecified products as well. Quick fix here, you can turn off TLS 1.3 ineffective versions of Chrome. That's probably the best thing you can do at this point. And Windows 10 apparently is working on implementing a feature that looks very much like Gatekeeper in OS 10. Gatekeeper on OS 10 allows an administrator to lock down a system so it only allows the user to install applications from Apple's App Store or that are signed with a valid Apple certificate. Well, uh, the selection in Windows 10 looks very similar. You can either just allow applications from the Microsoft Store or you can prefer applications from the Microsoft Store but allow apps from anywhere else. A third option is just to turn off the feature and allow apps from anywhere. The feature has gotten mixed reviews for OS X. Some people consider it too draconic. Uh, Others have noted that it's relatively easy, for example, for a malicious application to obtain a valid developer certificate. And we have seen plenty of that in the past. Also, it's still rather easy for a user to install any application by just right-clicking it and providing an administrator password. And with everybody moving to webmail as a favorite platform for email, it has been challenging to support end-to-end encryption in webmail clients uh, via PGP. Well, uh, Google now released into public source what they are calling E2Email or encrypted to encrypted mail, which uh, is a Chrome plugin that does integrate GPG with uh, Gmail and now since this is now open source you can take a look and see if you can integrate that in your own projects at this point the weakness is still somewhat the key server part but uh, Google uh, does suggest that they will integrate it with its recent key transparency initiative which would make it a lot easier also to verify that a certain key is authentic. S-MIME, of course, has also been integrated in various webmail platforms, but typically the encryption is done on the server in these schemes. And that, of course, does not provide the same assurance that end-to-end encryption via GPG provides, in particular, if you're using a cloud-based system. Microsoft's System Center Operation Manager is a popular product in particular to manage a large heterogeneous uh, server environments. And in order to accomplish its uh, tasks, it is able to store credentials uh, as so-called run as credentials. Well, uh, and the NCC group has a real nice blog out that tells you how to recover some of these credentials 
from SCOM. And then, of course, also how to audit if anybody is accessing those credentials. Now, the credentials are encrypted uh, within SCOM's uh, database, but the NCC group went through decompiling how they are encrypted and is now making a tool available that allows you to quickly decrypt uh, these credentials. Overall, this isn't a vulnerability. This is really just uh, how SCOM works. And of course, you always have to secure a system like SCOM very carefully, which is uh, why the second part of that blog post is also very important, where they're talking about how to enable additional auditing to detect someone accessing those credentials. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.